there was that, as you call it, that frenzy, number one, that HIV was strictly a gay disease and that once you got it, you were going to die. That was it. That was your death sentence. In 1985, I did find out I was HIV positive. People were very unsure. People were frightened. Some physicians didn't even want to deal with these patients. The first thought that comes to mind is how intense the period was, because there was so much unknown and so much fear about the HIV infection. It was mysterious. Nobody really knew what was going on, but there was a lot of fear. Rarely does one encounter in a lifetime a time when a new disease appears, and it's mysterious at all levels. We were really at the very beginnings of something very new but it was just devastating for patients. It wasn't until 1983 that groups around the world, in France and here in the United States, actually discovered a new virus called HIV, human immunodeficiency virus. Increasing proportions of the blood were being contaminated with the virus and then transmitted to people you know, via transfusions. We put together our plan for demonstrating to the National Institutes of Health that we were the best partner they had. If they only chose one person, Abbott Diagnostics should be their choice. In uh, May uh, 1984, we met with the NIH in uh, Washington, D.C., and we actually received uh, live virus growing in, in cells. And we asked if uh, we could expedite shipping the virus back to Abbott Park by using the corporate jet. Picked up. 25 liters of HIV tissue culture and virus uh, flew it back. The product development team got started you know, as soon as it arrived. There was a lot of excitement when I heard the plane was taking off in Washington, D.C. There was buzz around Abbott Park. The plane just took off. When we first started on this project, we really didn't consider that there was an option for failing. So the first task was to grow the virus, and then you had to determine how to purify the virus. And after purifying it, you'd have to determine how to inactivate the virus so that this inactivated virus could be brought out into the open and utilized to develop an immunoassay. That's where my team really uh, had the expertise to take this inactivated virus and develop an antibody test that would be able to detect people who were exposed to, the, to HIV. We had these round quarter-inch polystyrene beads that we utilized as the uh, target for putting the proteins on these beads. And they would send me the formulations and I would scale up from 10 beads to 300 to 3,000. 30,000, and then up to a million final batch size. It was nonstop, uh, around the clock teamwork. When we heard about the approval in the US for the first uh, HIV assay, we were very excited. I was sitting in the, in the middle of my living room floor thinking, wow, you know, this is, it, this was, it was phenomenal. I'd say six months or so before we thought we'd get around the test out of the market actually go around to customers and they would ask you what's the test going to be like i don't know when's it coming out i don't know but i mean you've got to have it on day one it was all about execution and getting these kits rapidly in the in the hands of these customers when we first heard that abbott were, had made available an hiv test we were very very excited we wanted to be the first blood transfusion service in south africa to start testing for hiv the introduction of the diagnostic test gave eyes to public health officials, eyes to physicians. It addressed a huge public health issue in the form of blood transfusions. The reason that finding a diagnostic test was so important was that's really the first stage of controlling the spread of the disease. We were extremely proud of our achievement. Uh, I remember you know, the celebrations that we had and the, the media coverage of that event was, was very special to all of us. I knew we had the test that people were looking for and I knew that we, in the long run, we were gonna save a lot of lives. The first uh, assays that were developed, like our own uh, assay, was what we call first generation assays. Shortly after we launched the HIV screening test, we developed the Omnicore assay. It was a, a two-tier test, tested for antibodies to the envelope and antibodies to the core protein. The next real evolutionary step in these assays was what we called second generation tests. Second gen test was uh, developed using the recombinant proteins. So the next evolution was third generation tests. Now these tests detect both IgG antibodies as well as IgM antibodies. And then finally fourth generation assays are assays that detect IgG and IgM but also detect P24 antigen from the virus. We call these combo assays. We're able to close that window from several weeks uh, down to probably one or two weeks 
from the time of infection to the time we can actually detect an infected individual. And these first generation assays that combine HIV antibody as well as antigen detection certainly belong to the most complex assays designs that our industry has been commercializing. Where we are today, you know, is a tribute to all the scientists and all the hard work that went on, not just in Abbott Diagnostic, but in the pharma group and everywhere in this company. One of the things it taught me as a physician is it taught me to, to learn how to help people to die. Thankfully, I don't have to do that very much anymore. It's fair to say that Abbott's been a leader throughout this, from having the very first licensed test to detect antibodies to HIV through our global surveillance program. It's with great pride that I've been a member of the ADD team with the HIV Diagnostics Program. Thank you, ADD, for all your great work and keeping up. The message that I want to get to my customers, the message I want to bring, Abbott Diagnostics is here to stay. I'm in gr greatly indebted to the scientific community. Uh, uh, for the advancement of research and for drugs that they have developed for HIV. Without them, I would be dead. I would extend more credit to them than I think that, they, that the outside public gives them. I don't think they get enough credit for what they've accomplished. I'm Jeffrey Gross, and I'm a 25-year AIDS survivor.